So that video, of course, uh, we were talking about yesterday, the new details we told you at the top of the segment released today by the Lansing Police Department. There's actually a lot to unpack here. I want to bring in former prosecutor and criminal defense attorney Robert Bianchi and law enforcement expert with more than 30 years of experience on pretty much every level of law enforcement, I should point out. Uh, Matthew Horace. Matthew, you and I were talking about this yesterday, and at that point, we did not have this off-duty officer side of the story. The police department putting that out today based on what we are told uh, by the police department this off-duty officer says happened leading up to the moments in that video. What's your take? Well, hello, Erica, and hello, Bob. We have more information now, Erica, and as we always say, the video only shows one portion of the incident. Based on what we have now, the officer found some evidence in his yard prior to the interaction with the youth. He had absolute right to hold on to those young people until police arrived. Had a right to hold on to them. One of the things we talked about yesterday, Matthew, is that the young man who's being pinned down there told a reporter with our local affiliate that the off-duty officer did not identify himself as a police officer. Should he have done that? Well, I think as we discussed yesterday, there's two different issues. Was he approaching him as an officer or was he approaching him as a homeowner? Because of what he found in the backyard, I would think he should have identified himself as an officer and that might have de-escalated the situation somewhat. So it's one thing to detain somebody who's on your property, Bob, but is this a way to do it? I mean, he says he told the kids, don't go anywhere, stay here until the police come. Most people who hear that would say, I'm getting the heck out of here, which they tried to do. And then he says he wanted to detain them. Is that the way to detain someone? This, uh, listen, use of force is something that officers are trained on, on how to escalate and de-escalate. And it's good to see my friend Matt here uh, discussing that. Uh, but, of course, he goes out. He sees a backpack. He sees what looks to be like a gun, a hat, a bat, I believe, is, as well. There's a commotion going on. There's a bloody kid on his porch. The cop does not know what is going on. And the law says that he has a reasonable use of force to detain. And when they're leaving, he actually detained them, which he's allowed to do, both as a homeowner as well as a police officer. Mm -hmm. It's shocking to me he didn't identify himself as a police officer. I'll wait to see what that investigation shows. But he waited for the cops to come, and then he immediately got off him. Listen, no one wants to see excessive force, but these cases are analyzed in three ways. Is it a good civil suit? Is it a criminal allegation? Or an administrative allegation, which is the lowest? This is only going to be an administrative one, and I would bet it's probably going to be on the use of some of the language that he used as opposed to the use of force. Let's talk about some of that language because it's pretty clear, um, or actually not because we had to bleep a lot of it out, but I think we all know what those bleeps mean. Uh, he used some very strong language, Matthew, and he was pinning this kid down. Well, what do you think about cases, that? Well, I, you know what, we can't, you can, whenever something like this happens, we can't justify the action, but certainly this was personal. This was at his home, and I, I would dare say at my home, if something happens like that, I may act somewhat differently than what my training has dictated. Where do you see this? Where do you see this going from here? Because again, we're starting to get we're starting to get some information. There are um, always at least two sides to a story, if not more. And we know that leading up to this, near the home, there was some sort of a big fight with as many as 30 juveniles. Police arrived on scene. The fight was over, but they found a bunch of kids there. It's still not clear, based on the information from the police department at this juncture, whether or not the young man who we see being pinned down in that lawn was involved in that fight or not. How much could that come into play, Matthew? Well, it very well might, but as the investigators get down and wind down their leads and figure this out, they may in fact determine if he was or if he wasn't. There are two separate issues. There's the fight, and they may never determine who was involved with that, but then there's the two intruders on, his, on the officer's property. Whether they were there for good reason or not, there's two intruders. They don't belong there. There's a bag, there's a, a BB gun, uh, and there's other information. So until we get the information, we don't, we don't have all the, all the answers. Bob, uh, who do you think is uh, in the process of retaining counsel at this point? Well, they're going to get a civil attorney. They already have done that. The prosecutor's office is going to look at it. And then the police department is going to look at it administratively. I'm telling you as a person who's investigated these both as the head prosecutor as well as a civil rights litigator, the civil rights case is not good. The criminal case is non-existent. There may be some administrative action with regard to the language. The police officer's actions, with all due respect, and the use of force continuum and how they're trained and how they detained him it was reasonable given what that officer saw and not knew knowing what was going on with an injured person on his property. In fact, that that injured person was on his property and that was a perpetrator and he just let him go, then they'd be complaining that the cop didn't properly detain somebody who had committed a crime. So, I mean, the cops sometimes are between a rock and a hard place they can't win. Bob Bianchi, uh, Matthew Horace, appreciate you both joining us today. Thank you. Have a good day.